Welcome to the Stash and Notions podcast, coming to you from Bacchus Marsh in Victoria, Australia. My name's Penelope, and you can find me on both Instagram and Ravelry as Miss Red Pen. Today is Sunday, the 16th of October 2016, and this is episode 6, Go West, Stephen. How are you? I hope you've had a fantastic couple of weeks since we last met. Um... I am doing so much better, as you can probably tell from my voice. I'm still not 100%, but I'm pretty close to it now. So um, oh, for any new viewers who have just joined us, I I had a bit of a um, respiratory issue, which really messed with my voice. So the previous episode, I'm sounding very, very husky indeed. Um, so big, big thank you to everyone who sent me well wishes um it, it it meant a lot to me and i really really appreciate it um so in for those of you who are new this is a knitting spinning fiber craft crafty podcast um and, but i also talk about things going on with me i guess Norm, normal podcasty things i guess um, and a bit of what's happening around Backers Marsh, if there is anything worth noting. Um, today's podcast, we are going to uh, talk about the knit along that I'm hosting. I've got a finished object to show you, a few works in progress, and a couple of stash stories. So let's just jump straight into it and move on to the first segment. First thing to talk about today is the Transitions Knit Along that I am running here on the podcast and you can participate by joining in on Ravelry in the Stash and Notions podcast group or over on Instagram and I'll put the details in the show notes on what you need to do on Ravelry um, with the, the hashtag details. Um, it's kicked off in September. It's got another just under two weeks left. We're closing it at midnight, going from Friday to Saturday. I think that's the 28th to the 29th. Um, and then we will announce some prizes. So to participate, and there's still plenty of time to get something done, or at least get onto the chatter thread if you want to get involved. Um, the, the idea was to knit an item for yourself or somebody else if you like that will take you through from your current season into the next one so for us here in the southern hemisphere from spring into summer or you know conversely in the other half of the planet from autumn into winter um, there are a few prizes to give away and what they are is the little stashed notions tin that I have assembled so a little tiny tin like this uh, here's just one example and it comes fully kitted out with um, measuring tape scissors darning needle on the lid um, a row counting stitch marker which is really really cool check it out um, and the tin I've put a little base in to make it a little more quiet when it's bumping around in your bag and last but not least is the special collaboration of a mini blinglets packet from Fiberific. so you know, these blinglets are really great because the way she's made them she's handmade these um, so that they are snag free um, I've had a bit of trouble lately with other stitch markers getting caught in fine yarn and let's face it the idea of knitting is not to get your yarn looking like rubbish so using good tools will help you get a bit better product so get on to that prizes to be announced in the next episode so yeah definitely get on to the group or on to instagram with your project and it doesn't just have to be knitting or crochet it can be any craft you like for any item you think is going to work within the um, parameters of the knit along so have some fun and I look forward to seeing pictures of your works in progress. Um, oh, just as a reminder, there are giveaways for both works in progress and finished objects. So if you don't get it done by the end of the month, just, just join in and have a chat, you know, um, whatever you want to do. And on that note, let's move on to the next segment. 
we're talking about my works in progress we're going to take a little breath in out and calm myself down I'm feeling a little bit rushed this morning because I am heading out this afternoon to spend some time with a fellow crafter um, I did intend to film this yesterday afternoon because I had my hair done yesterday as you can see I'm trying this new lighter strawberry blonde kind of thing for summer Let's see how it goes um, and so you know I had the whole perfectly salon curl thing going on and thought it'd be good to do it then but um, I got distracted as I tend to and decided I had to sort my stash I'd started going stash diving looking for something for a project that I will talk about in a bit um, and decided it was time to get it all categorized and filed away so that next time I need to go stash diving I can do it without having to empty everything out of every box and start pouring through so what I've done is um, I've got a whole bunch of badges pins buttons I don't know what they're called in different places um, and I'm using those to stick on the front of the fabric IKEA boxes that I keep things in and then cross-referencing those into the little stored in section in Ravelry so um, I'll put a little picture of one of the photos in here you know the buttons how I've done them um, I did a Kickstarter or back to Kickstarter I should say uh, couple of years ago for the Lizzie Bennett Diaries um, YouTube series that went on to DVD and one of the rewards that I got in that was a series of little um, cartoon badges of all the characters so I've put the Bennett sisters on one box and so you know in Ravelry if I'm looking for my you know 2,000 meters of something or other I know that it's in that box and I can just pull that one out and then pour through it rather than the entire stash because let me tell you <laughs> so many boxes these days it's a bit of a nightmare when everything's upended on the floor and you're trying to find one particular bag with one particular skein so I am hoping that this will make life a little less you know challenging in the future but what it meant was that when it was by the time I'd sort of gotten over that and finished tidying up I was exhausted and didn't have the energy to film so I'm up I'm feeling under the pump to get it done before I head out anyway enough of that and let's talk about my finished object yes it, well almost finished I was going to pause and sew in the ends before I showed you this but again pump under it um, this is my do-over for my own transitions knit along um, and it is the new pattern from Shara on the What Shara Made podcast and it is the Strata Shawl. Um, I had a lot of fun knitting this. It took me just under two weeks. I started it Sunday I started it on the evening on the night of the last podcast and finished casting it off um, yesterday morning and here it is in all of its glory um, super duper fun knit as as is often described by Shara it is a kind of popcorn knit so it's in segments and there's different pattern parts as you can see and you kind of just want to keep going so you can get to see what the next segment is going to look like as you knit it up um, so there we go it I'll need to block it not too aggressively but a little bit just to open up that mesh lace work you can see here in from the top so yeah um, blocking so I'll soak it for a little bit um, let's talk about soak in a second uh, and then yeah pin it out so that it stretches out to the right wingspan or width um, so that yeah when it's worn it will fit properly um, now the yarn that I used is from Thimble and Pearl I have the ball band here she is a local Melbourne 
um, fiber artist, I guess you'd say, or yarn dyer. Um, lovely, cute little ball band there. Look at that. And this was her top shelf DK, which is a hundred percent superwash merino. Um, I used about 350 meters, so it was um, a skein and a quarter, a third, maybe there's 250 meters in um, a skein here. Uh, I The pattern called for four millimeter needles, but I have a super tight gauge, and so I just bumped it up to um, four and a half millimeters. Uh, the, I used the carbons from Knit Picks, Knit Pro. Um, and then I didn't do a gauge swatch because you know it's just a shawl unless you know you're really aiming for perfect dimensions on a garment I don't tend to worry about a swatch and um, yeah it was, it was great so um, I'm really looking forward to getting this one out um, probably seems a bit odd to be doing a eight ply DK weight garment for a transition from spring into summer particularly in you know Victoria but we have had one of the wettest and coolest September and October's on record and you know it's predicted for more rain to come into the end of the month and November so these cooler temperatures and an eight ply shawl scarf is needed particularly you know on my commutes from home to the city it's it's an early start it's a late finish and um why be cold when you can wear a fabulous scarf or shawl uh that's that is the only thing i've actually finished this week so i'm gonna have a sip of my tea um this was a gift from my friend kylie so thanks kylie and i'm just drinking plain old english breakfast nothing nothing fancy there no, it's not English breakfast, I tell a lie. It's Earl Grey. Earl Grey from T2. And let's move on. Works in progress. This segment is probably not going to be that interesting this time around because I was almost monogamous for the last fortnight working on the Stra Strata Shawl. The first one is the socks, which I think think I showed last time or maybe the time before um, I actually haven't knit on these in the last fortnight I was going to yesterday when I was at the hairdressers I'd taken it along and got myself set up and then I realized I hadn't brought my iPad um, I use an app um, on my iPad and my phone that's called knit companion and to sync projects between the two um, devices what you have to do is upload the project into Dropbox and then download it on the second device um, unlike any other app that I use across multiple platforms and devices where it's all done within the, um, the app itself so what that meant was I got I got to the hair salon you know I'm sitting there the colors on we're waiting and I pull everything out ready to go and then I realize I don't have the project with me so I don't know what bro I'm up to in the pattern and um, I could have tried and figured it out and you know um, because I did have access to the pattern itself and set it all up again but it takes ages to set up a project um, once it's done it's great because it's really easy to just then flick through as you go but um, yeah so I decided not to do that and instead I just pestered my best friend um, about things related to my wedding that's happening sometime next year so <laughs> that that was a bit of a fun fun time um, it's from Bigfoot Knits let me just take the cover off um, I bought it as a PDF from Cooperative Press um, and then I printed it out and had it bound what I liked about this one is yeah the patterns are designed for people who have wider feet or and wider calves but there's also really good instructions on how to customize everything to your perfect shape including different ankles and toes um, scaling up and down if you've got like super shapely calves so if you've got a tiny ankle and a big kinky calf hello um, yeah you can tweak things so that you get the perfect sock 
So the one I am working on is, let's try and find it, I think it's called Marama or Maroma, uh, do, do, do. here we get, Mar Mar yeah, Marama. So that's the pattern there. Um, so yeah, the simple cable on the side there. Um, and this one had options for doing it from the top down and toe up. And so as you may recall from the last one, I am doing it from the toe up. And the reason for that is the yarn that I'm using, which is a gradient dyed sock yarn, started at the light end and worked to the dark. And so I wanted light toes and dark cuffs. Um, so here we are. Uh, I am about, what's that, halfway, third way through the foot. And yes, so I will tag that and we will see how much more progress I get done in the next fortnight. Let's put it back in its bag. Um, the next work in progress is, it was a UFO. Um, for those who are unfamiliar with the term UFO, unfinished objects. So it's something that you started on ages ago and then you stop working on it for whatever reason and it's just sat there. You're not going to pull it out. You, you have intentions of finishing it one day, but working on it now is just not the go. So this one, it is a cardigan that I started last year for the inaugural um, Aussie Cardical. And that was a knit along that I came up with and hosted it elsewhere on Ravelry. Um, there's this event that happens in November in the knitting world called Nani Suimo, which is um, National Knitter Sweater Month or something, where, where they want you to knit a full jumper in November. And a lot of people, of course, say that you can complete a jumper in November doing really chunky knits. And let's face it, this is Australia. We're heading into summer in November and there ain't anybody who wants to knit a giant chunk, chunky sweater just before summer starts. So what I thought is we should have a seasonally appropriate knit along here in Australia um, in autumn heading into winter and sort of the motivator for me at the time was to try and get it done before the Australian Sheep and Wool Show in Bendigo so that I had a finished item to take. Obviously if I'm about to pull it out and show you now that didn't happen last year, it did happen this year um, and I intend for it to happen again next year. So the one that I made last year is the Tempest cardigan um, and I don't remember who the designer was so I'll add it to the show notes. Um, it's a free pattern um, on knitty.com and where I had gotten to was I have finished the knitting of the main pieces and I have seamed up one side. And so I am now starting the seaming to attach the second sleeve um, to the body and seam it all up so that I can then do the button bands and the, what's the name of it? The, the waistband. Um, and it has been sitting there because yourselves huge revelation here I hate seaming I hate it it is the most annoying thing that you have to do in the knitting world um, so I spend a lot of time now hunting down projects that have very little or no seaming to do if you don't get it right it looks really sloppy and messy as you can see a little bit from my seaming on the shoulder here um, yeah, so I don't know what I'm doing most of the time with this kind of thing. So, um, yeah, I pulled it out again yesterday and have now attached the sleeve and lined everything up here, ready to attach and keep going and get that done. Um, it seemed like a perfect time to do it now as it is the um, finish or frog it knit along, craft along over on Bunny Fish Designs, which is one of the podcast that is on my must see list every week. So I've got excellent motivation to get that one done. Speaking of the finish of Froggit, last time I put a question to you about another project in the finish of Froggit's should I finish it or Froggit being a 
um, vest that I'd started and gotten up to just the underarms and got bored with it and the overwhelming response was to just frog it and I have to agree bye bye vest oh I get to reclaim a couple of really cute stitch markers in the process so that's a win I thought I'd lost some of these so you know that's always a, a bonus this is a Lego head stitch marker which came from the Quizzical Owl in Brisbane. Yay! So this yarn was is um, from Bendigo Woolen Mills. I got it in their back of house. Come back when we're done. Okay, so I'm not done. It's going to take ages to do. I will do it later this afternoon tonight when I'm watching a podcast because I do have one more item to show you and this is my spinning project that I have been working on. So um, as I have shown previously this is my full bobbin that I spun from the bat. So it's an Ishel Bunny um, fibre. So a couple of years ago, when was it? 2015. Ah, I early 2015 I joined one of her fiber clubs and because I couldn't decide whether I wanted the bat or the top I got both and this was the bat um, that is not the right card now I'm gonna to have to rely on my memory to do this one it it was a bat it's got um, rose and alpaca fiber and Angora and a few other bits and pieces all, all mixed together. So yes, I've got the got the the bat and the top. So I've done the bat and now I am spinning at the top so that and with the intention of plying them together. Now the top is coming out ridiculously super fine. It's amazing. Um, I don't even know if I can get it close enough to show you just how fine this is coming out. Like it's amazing and it's so strong. Um, I have snapped it a couple of times along the way, but yeah, look at that. Um, let's see if I can get a close up with the bobbin. Um, this is my my spinning wheel, which is a little little gem from Magicraft, and I love. It's been a really good beginner learn to spin kind of um, thing. Okay, yeah, look at that. So fine. <laughs> well, it's thin. It's still uneven. But um, again, that's just a practice, 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 we'll get it done kind of thing. Um, but the top, even though it is, it's a little, little, you know, snappy for me, um, it's actually quite easy to spin with and easy to draw with all those different fibres to get it, get it fine. Um, Charlie, if you ever see this and you watch it and you decide to do that blend again, let me know because I would love to get more tops in it. Thank you. <laughs> on that one, let's move on to the next segment. Stash stories. I have some new acquisitions to talk about, something from the vault, and a new product that's not stash, but it's part of the supplies kit that I have for knitting, and it seems appropriate to talk a bit about it here. I'm so excited about the first one that I'm going to show you. Um, it's probably a little overexcited actually. Um, I put in an order with Ruinvine Yarns, who is an indie dyer based in Brooklyn, New York. She also has an amazing podcast called Yarngasm, which is also on my um, must-see list. Anyway, trying to order yarn from her had been a bit of a challenge. Um, first thing was, being in America, it's expensive to ship. So I had decided that I could only buy this once the Aussie dollar had bounced back up again above 75 US cents, um, which it did tick. And then um, she released a colorway, which she was doing a little bit last year and then I guess got tired of working on it and put it retired it temporarily. And now and it's been back for autumn because it has got some beautiful autumnal colors. And obviously I'm speaking northern hemisphere autumn um and so when i show it to you you'll, you'll see why i had to have this particular one it is linked to a favorite television show um outlander 
it is her Outlander colorway. And look at this. I when I when I saw it, it was basically this is my coloring in yarn. You know, you've got ginger hair and blue eyes and ridiculously white skin and a bit of brown for the freckles. And I just like got to have it. It's got to be mine. And it took me three weeks, three weeks just to order it. The first um, she released does her shop updates um, at 7 p.m. on a Friday night, um, her time, which works out to well before our daylight savings kicked in. It was about 9 a.m. on Saturday morning. So the first time I missed out because I had slept in. Um, by about 15 minutes. So by the time I got online, she had sold out of this colorway entirely. Bummer, my own fault. Second time I tried, I got on, got the yarn into my cart, and then I got cart jacked. And what this means is that the um, cart system that was she was using at the time um, didn't reserve stock. So you know, like if you're if you're in a supermarket and you've got your shopping trolley cart in front of you and you're walking up and down the aisles and you're putting stuff into your cart no one else can come along and go oh I want to buy that I'm going to take it out of your cart and pay for it before you are done um, but in the online world stuff isn't it doesn't work like that so if somebody else beats you to the checkout they get the item and while you think you've got it and you're plugging in your details nope nope so I missed it the second time third time the charm um, she she, Kristen, from Vine, lovely. She, <laughs> um, she did an international sales one. Um, ironically, it was the least convenient because I had to stay up until midnight my time in order to get the cart done. And she must have heard the feedback from me and other other buyers that the cart jacking thing was becoming. A major issue and switch carts and so I was able to get in and out and buy my products without any issues so yes I have this one the Outlander which is on her narwhal base so it's it's um, a fingering weight three ply so it's got superwash BFL um, blue face Lester and then silk and cashmere so um, I, I even have a project in mind for this one. Um, I did get a second skein. Let's pull it out. Um, it is also on the narwhal base. Um, it is called Enjoy the Silence. And I just, you know, this purples and greens and specky things. I, I really loved that one as well. So um, I had a bit of inspiration on what I'd like to do with both of these. And they are to knit from... Um, to Stephen West shawls. When I first saw these shawls, I wasn't super keen on them, but after um, Kristen had done a um, exploration station shawl, I thought, yeah, I'd like to knit one of those now. And I think I'm going to put the, the, the yeah, the enjoy the silence in the exploration station. And I found one of the other colours to go with it which is probably this this one here which is a Madeleine Tosh I thought they went together and a grey that I've got which is in one of the stash boxes so I won't pull that out right now and I've just got to find the fourth colour to go with that one um, now with the Outlander I have decided that I'm going to knit the Doodler from Stephen West as well and I'm going to pair it with this one which is from Mayhem and Chaos. It is her Rockstar base, which is um, merino and silk and nylon as well and silver. Um, so it's a four ply though, but that's okay. Because um, look at these two colorways together. Um, hello, Outlander. You've got Jamie and you've got his kilt. Look at that. Um, I just have to find the third color for this one, which is proving to be a major challenge. I did think about this one. I'm not sure. It is um, from Yarn vs Zombies and it is... There's one I got in her Downton Abbey Club and it's called The Sitting Room. Um, but I'm not entirely sure if that's too busy and I need to go for something that's more of a solid or semi-solid tonal kind of thing. Um, but I kind of like, you know, that kind of dusty, cool, pinky, mute 
I think it does work to work. What do you reckon? Um, but yeah, when I go yarn shopping this afternoon, I will take these two with me and pair it all up. Um, oh, hang on. If I don't use this one in those two, it would work with that as well. Look at that. Hmm. Tough call. Oh, um, the other thing is Mayhem and Chaos is another um, Australian indie dyer. So, and this is really pretty, and I've got a few things from her in my stash, but I do need to actually knit some up and tell you what it is like to work with. I think that is that for stash stories. No, no it is not. Okay, the last thing to tell you about is the product. It is called the Yarnet. Here it is here. I got this on Kickstarter. Um... It is uh, one part yarn ball, one part yarn protector, and it has this little rubbery base on the bottom where you can put things like stitch markers and things. Um, I also have a matching tote. Now, um, I haven't actually tried knitting with it yet. I have wound off a um, skein of Madeleine Tosh worsted, um, and I'm going to knit a pair of fingerless gloves. And I will probably cast that on very, very soon because um, I've got this little corseted glove pattern that I found um, that um, would probably fit in. Speaking of wool and vine, it's all about wool and vine in this segment, isn't it? <laughs> um, she's doing a Victorian knit along, and um, since the gloves are corseted, it, it fits. Kickstarter. The purpose of this Kickstarter was um, to get funding or raise funds in order to make a large version of the yarnet um, which happened yay obviously as I have an, an item here and in the list of rewards you didn't just have to get the big yarn there was an option to get kickstarters which were either the original one which was just basically the clear version of this or limited edition versions which have cute little designs put on in Swarovski crystals um, this one actually came with a purple base. It's called the Midnight Star. Um, and it was advertised on Kickstarter as an exclusive. Now, to me, an exclusive means that you can... It's only available to the people who got it through Kickstarter, obviously. But what wasn't explained at all anywhere was that they were being custom-made based on the number of orders they got in Kickstarter wasn't mentioned anywhere just that it was an exclusive and so it took a lot longer to get the product than they were expecting for a number of reasons um, because there was an issue with getting the crystals right and adhesive blah 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 um, but it wasn't it wasn't well communicated at all about the fact that they were custom being custom made just that they were an exclusive so um, I was a little bit frustrated by that and I'll on from that in the next episode I will take have taken the yarn out and about and done some knitting using it in the real world so I will tell you um, if the product in and of itself is um, you know worth considering or whether it was just one of those now that I've got it kind of things um, Speaking of yarnets though, the, the concept of it is not new because this is so cool. See this one? This is an original one from sometime in the last century. Um, it belonged to my nan, grandmother, um, my mum's mum, and it is the old, I think, is it Bakelite? Is that what it's called? But it was designed yeah, for knitting on the go. Put it over your wrist and then there's a little hole in the bottom for your yarn to come through. Um, yeah, and knit on the go. I mean, this is from obviously back in the day when yarn pretty much came in, you know, 50 gram balls or less because one of the cakes that I use these days ain't going to fit in that. So I just keep it around as a reminder of my nan. That is all. And let's move on to the next segment. I just realised there are no more segments and we have come to the end of another episode. 
I hope you've enjoyed today's podcast and if you do please remember to subscribe to the channel uh, like this particular episode and get on over onto Ravelry and join the group um, if you've got any questions you want to ask of me please please do I'm happy to answer anything you'd like to know um, otherwise I hope you have a fantastic fortnight till we meet again and happy crafting bye